In this lecture, we're going to learn about conditional rendering. Conditional rendering is when elements are added or removed from the document based on a condition. If a condition is truthy, the element is added to the page. Otherwise, the element is removed. Previously, we talked about how to bind classes and stylings to an element. We can use CSS styles to hide an element on the page. This solution can be implemented by toggling the display or visibility properties on an element. While it's a valid solution, there's an alternative solution from View for toggling elements. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a zip file with some starter files. Download it, unzip the contents, and point your editor to those files. Pause the video if you need to. There's not much going on with what I have provided you. In the HTML file, we have the usual div element with the ID app. In the script file, we're creating a new instance. First, we'll look at how to add or remove an element based on the data inside the view instance. In the template, we'll add a paragraph tag. The contents will be the following, showing v if directive content. The goal is to toggle the element by using a directive called vif. This feature is what view calls conditional rendering. If a specific condition is met, the element will be rendered onto the template. We'll apply the vif directive to the paragraph tag. The value must be the condition. We'll set the condition to the following, mode equals equals 1. The mode property does not exist. Let's create it inside the data object. In the script file, we'll define the data function inside the configuration object. Next, we'll create the mode data property with an initial value of 1. Time to give the app a test in the browser. The paragraph tag renders onto the document without a problem. If we were to view this in the Elements panel, we would notice that nothing unusual is applied to the element. View can keep track of this element based on the data. We're going to switch to the Console panel of the Developer Tools. We're going to access the View instance through the VM variable. We'll update the Mode Data property to 2. This value is random. I'm not choosing the number 2 for any reason. After reassigning the value, the paragraph disappears. This is because the condition is no longer true. Therefore, the element gets removed. We can even check the Elements panel to check if it was removed. This is something important I want to highlight. View will not hide the element. It will altogether remove the element from the document. I'm going to switch back to the console and reassign the value back to 1. The paragraph element is back. If we were to check the elements panel, the element was added back in. It appears in the same spot with the same content. This functionality is great. We don't have to use CSS tricks to hide the element whenever we don't want it to appear. View will automatically keep track of where the element was placed initially. It'll add or remove elements based on the conditions you set in the directives. The vif directive is not the only conditional directive we have at our disposal. Back inside the editor, we're going to add two more sets of paragraph tags with some dummy content. The second set of paragraph tags will have the vElseIf directive applied to it. This directive can only be used after an element that is using the vIf directive. For example, if we inserted another paragraph above this element, this will break the application. View would throw an error because it's expecting the element before to have the vIf directive applied to it. I'm going to remove this since we don't want an error. The value for the vElseIf directive must be a condition that evaluates to true or false. We're going to check if mode is equal to 2. This condition will be checked if the condition inside the vIf directive returns false. If the first vIf directive returns true, this will not be checked even if the condition for this directive is true. 
For the last paragraph element, we're going to apply the VELSE directive. We don't need to add a condition because VIEW will not check it. This directive will make the element appear on the page if previous conditions fail. Once again, we are required to have this element appear on the same level and after the other conditional directives. It works the same way as JavaScript conditional statements. One more thing. We're not limited to what elements we can use. The conditional directives don't have to be applied to the same element. We can use different elements. We can change the second paragraph tag to an H3 tag. This structure is considered valid because it's still at the same level. However, I can't wrap it with another tag like a div tag. Even though the condition is provided after the VIF directive, the fact that it isn't on the same level will throw an error. I'm going to undo this. Those are some limitations you should be aware of before using this directive. Before we test our app, we're going to create a drop-down below everything. We'll add an option for each conditional directive. We want to be able to update the mode data property without having to use the console. We're using the vModel directive for updating the mode data property. Make sure you have the same as me before continuing. I'm going to refresh the page. The content in the first paragraph element will be visible. If I were to set the mode property to 2, then the H3 element will appear thus proving that the elements don't have to be the same. Lastly, we'll set the mode property to 3, which will show the element with the VELSE directive. This directive will only be triggered if all previous conditions failed. I'm going to switch to the Elements panel. I'm going to toggle between the modes using the drop-down. As I do so, VIEW can handle adding and removing elements from the document. This is a powerful feature that takes very little work on our side to make function. Let's take things a step further. Sometimes you want to display multiple elements without having to use numerous conditions. Let's look at an example. In the document, let's say we want to render a paragraph and H3 tag conditionally. We'll add a paragraph tag above the heading. This tag will break the conditional directive chain. View will throw an error if we do this. But let's say I wanted both elements to appear if the second condition we have is true. The obvious solution would be to wrap both elements with a div tag. Then, we can move the directive to the div element. This solution will work, but there's one problem with it. It changes the structure of our document. It may be fine if you're working on a simple app. If you're working on a larger app, it may be necessary to maintain the document's structure because of CSS. The CSS may expect the document to be structured a certain way. Your styles may not be so forgiving if you change the structure of the document. If the HTML structure changes, you may have to make changes to your CSS to accommodate this scenario continually. That's not very fun and it can make our document more cluttered than it has to be. We can maintain the same structure by replacing the div tag with the template tag. This is not an official HTML element, but it is a valid view element. View will render the contents of the template tag without rendering the tag itself. As a result, we'll still be able to keep our HTML structure without ruining our styling's integrity. Let's see what this looks like. I'll refresh the page one more time. If I were to update the mode property to 2, both elements inside the template tag would appear. That's exactly what we wanted. If we were to switch to the Elements panel of the Developer Tools, we would see both elements appear without the template tag wrapped around it. View will take care of removing it while still allowing the content inside to be rendered. This is one way of handling conditional rendering. The VIF, VELSEIF, and VELSE directives can handle conditional rendering. 
In the next lecture, we'll look at an alternative solution for conditionally rendering content.